Snowflake Bentley, written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin. This book won the Caldecott Medal, which means it was the best illustrated book for children that year. This book is a biography, so you'd find it in the B for Bentley section in biographies. I'm going to mention to you, too, that in this book there are these sidebars that are really cool. They're extra information about him or what he did. I'm not going to be able to read all of them, but you can always go back through the video and read them for yourselves. I'll read you this one, though. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Wilson Bentley was born February 9, 1865, on a farm in Jericho, Vermont, between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield, in the heart of the snow belt, where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the icy crystals. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had imagined. He expected to find whole snowflakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. Okay, and over here it says, the camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows. Yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. Over here it says Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening, which let only a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. And over here it says he learned, too, that he could make the snow crystal show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystal. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with their horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, 
the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. Some winters he made hundreds. And over here it says, he learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits, molecules, of water attached to the speck to form its branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystals' branches grow. A little more cold, a little less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why, in all his pictures, he never found two snowflakes alike. Willie so loved the beauty of nature, he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. But his snow crystal pictures were always his favorites. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. And here it says many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs and added to their collections each year. Artists and designers used the photographs to inspire their own work. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not quite ready to quit. And over here it says, Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. And here it says, By 1926, he had spent 15000 on his work and received 4000 for the sale of photographs and slides. Less than a month after turning the first page on his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. He became ill with pneumonia after that walk and died two weeks later. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist. And his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mittens, thanks to Snowflake Bentley. And in the back is a picture of him. There you go, with his camera. And here are some of the crystal pictures, snowflake crystal pictures he took. And here's a quote by him. The average dairy farmer gets up at dawn because he has to go to work in the cow yard. I get up at dawn too, but it is because I want to find some leaf hung with dew or a spider web which the dew has made into the most delicate ropes of pearls. I take my camera with me, get down on my knees in the wet grass, and photograph these exquisite bits of nature. Because I do this, I can show these lovely things to people who never would have seen them without my help. They will get their daily quart of milk all right. Other farmers will attend to that. But I think I am giving them something which is just as important. W. A. Bentley I'm going to use the book The Secret Life of a Snowflake by Kenneth Liebrecht to show you some more wonderful photographs of snowflakes.
And he probably would not know how to do this if it wasn't for Snowflake Bentley. This is a great book with information about how snowflakes are formed and why they look different, but I just wanted to show you a few snowflakes. And this is showing how small they actually are compared to a penny. A lot of these that he photographed are magnified a lot. Anyway, so if you get a chance, this is a great book to read too talks about how the snowflake is formed. You can also pause the video and read these too, I suppose. How they have six arms, why they have six arms, which is really interesting, why other crystals are shaped differently, how to make a snowflake, how they grow. Anyways, quite beautiful. There you go.